Cześć, witajcie. Jesteśmy krótko po szkoleniu teoretycznym dla ponad 200 osób, które przeprowadziliśmy wspólnie z firmą Lalemant. Mówiliśmy o dobrych praktykach przy sporządzaniu kiszonek z pasz z zielonek, z trawy, z lucerny. Przede wszystkim, gdzie firma Lalemant wraz ze swoim specjalistą Frankiem Kuchmeisterem opowiedziała nam, w jaki sposób dobrze przygotować kiszonkę. Wiedza teoretyczna, również praktyka, e, dlatego że odwiedziliśmy kilka gospodarstw rolnych, między innymi to, gdzie rozmawialiśmy o tym, e, gdzie rolnik popełnił niewielkie błędy, których nie dało się uniknąć i w jaki sposób moglibyśmy w przyszłym roku e, tym niedociągnięciom niewielkim zapobiec. We want to check what was wrong done uh, with the silage in last year. First of all, let's start with the good things. Not okay. just start with the bad things, maybe. Okay. Uh, the covering is quite well done. You have two layers of films. Mm -hmm. um, it's not decovered too much. So it's maybe one meter. So what they should feed relatively quickly. So that is nice. Also, the feed out is regarding the technique the farm has really nicely done. Mm -hmm. So it's quite straight. You don't have a lot of old leftovers in front of the silage. So that is good. You can still be a little better, but that is okay. Mm -hmm. And what about the corner? What do you think? Because I, it looks not, not the best. That is a very good point, yes. As you can see, it's completely dark, slimy. It's completely rotten. It's rubbish in the it's end. Rubbish. It's compost. It's rubbish. You can't feed it and it's even dangerous okay. to feed it. Um, and you see, it's quite big. You see the plaque? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also important, you should remove it. And to be very, very safe, you should remove quite big parts. Okay. When you remove that, it means you lose a lot of money. The silage has a high value. Mm -hmm. Money value, you lose it. You remove, you lose. That's why I would recommend here a side film. Side film, okay. Because the concrete is not perfect, yeah? Here we see the air can go straight there. Yeah. Of course, and also it's always difficult to close the shoulder of the silage mm -hmm. just with the two layers. If you have here a second or a third layer, mm -hmm. put it here, it would be much, much better and you will save a lot of silage and a lot of quality. And very important, also the concrete mm -hmm. is expensive to make. Mm -hmm. The silage is sour, is acetic and will destroy time by time by time the, the concrete. Okay. When you have a film, even the concrete is protected. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And what the, the, the size of the particles, what was cut at? What do you think? Uh, I think it was done with a loading wagon maybe. Yeah. So that is always long. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to have a very well chopped silage with a loading wagon. It will be difficult to mix and the cows will separate easily such mm -hmm. long particles. They can easily say, no, I don't eat it. And also, what do you think about uh, inoculants? If they'll help a little bit to, to make much more effective food for the cows? What we can see, the dry matter is low. Yeah. It's, you can see the liquid running out yeah so it's below 30 percent it's maybe below 25 percent in some areas uh -huh. and you also see here the different layers different colors mm -hmm. as the farmer said different fields different dry matters mm -hmm. so and even if you smell the mm -hmm. smell is not optimal mm -hmm. so we have here a not optimal fermentation maybe even bad fermentation with some butyric acid, mm -hmm. losses and so on. Here, an inoculant definitely would help. would help. It would support the fermentation, it would support the pH drop in the very first hours and days, mm -hmm. because here I think pH is a little high, maybe even too high. We have a breakdown of protein, so we lose a lot of protein 
It could be even dangerous for animal health. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it's only uh, one step in making silo, yeah? the, the fermentation, because when we keep the, the raw materials and put close the, the silo, yeah. then is the, the, the point where the inoculants are working. Yeah? Absolutely. Also an important point, you said several steps. Absolutely yeah. right. Uh -huh. One step would also be, as we had before, mm -hmm. the chopping. Mm -hmm. It's here difficult mm -hmm. because it's it's long loading wagon mm -hmm. so also the compaction of that mm -hmm. even if it's wet will be difficult mm -hmm. you see when you when i try to compact it it's always going up again and also uh, you see the alfalfa here yeah. uh, as we know the the alfalfa is the plant which is high protein yeah. content yeah uh, and it's uh, has got a very big buffering capacity yeah what is the um, program from Lalemant to uh, to make better silo from from uh, from alfalfa? You're absolutely right. It has high buffering capacity, and, and high low protein, level of, and low low level of sugar. Yeah, exactly, and low level of sugar. Mm -hmm. Like grass silage mm -hmm. can also be high in protein, mm -hmm. um, high in buffer capacity relatively, mm -hmm. but it has mostly a lot of sugar. Alfalfa has mm -hmm. low amount mm -hmm. of sugar. Mm -hmm. It's wet, protein, so fermentation is really, really tricky because mm -hmm. the good lactic acid bacteria have no food, no sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here you would need sugar and Lalamore is using enzymes. Enzymes cutting out of the cell wall of the plants some okay. simple sugars to feed uh -huh. the bacteria, the uh -huh. good ones. Okay, but if we could compare this method to put some extra sugar inside the silo, for example, to put molasses because it's popular, quite popular to put a little bit, bit of, of molasses to, to make silo, to put sugar inside the raw materials. Um, first of all, it's possible, yes. Mm -hmm. First thing, a little bit of molasses mm -hmm. means nothing. You need high amounts to really increase the sugar content. A little bit is just mm -hmm. losing money, losing time, no effect. Okay. You need high amounts, but if you have, uh, like here, a wet silage and maybe soil contamination inside <laughs> and so on, and you put sugar inside, you also feed the bad bacteria, Clostridia and so on. And what would be the consequences? Very bad fermented silage. In the worst case, a big bunker of compost that you have throw, to okay. throw away. Okay. That's why if you use molasses, Mm -hmm. Always use also lactic acid bacteria that you make sure that you have some lactic acid bacteria inside mm -hmm. that really can do the fermentation for you. Mm -hmm. Just sugar means nothing. Okay, Frank. So now we are in another bunker. We can see the mice slash. Uh, can you tell a little bit about guidelines for the farmers, good practices? Uh, I would recommend really to have such a small thermometer for a okay. farmer. For the farmer? For a farmer. Mm -hmm. It's not expensive. It's 10 mm -hmm. to 20 euro, mm -hmm. so not expensive, always have it and frequently check your silage. Okay. Just when you are feeding out from time to time, just measure on different points and check for like hot spots if your silage is maybe heating or not. Okay. Because and what is telling for the farmer that he has got hot spots? It, when it's, it's when it's hot, uh -huh. yeast and and or bacteria are working there and eating the silage. Heat uh -huh. means always energy mm -hmm. so energy is lost mm -hmm. microorganisms eating the silage in that part it's lost and the animals um, will reduce feed intake if you feed spoiled warm mm -hmm. silage animals will eat not so much of that silage fiber digestibility will go down and in the worst worst case you will even have mold and mold can produce even mycotoxins so if you at least measure Mm -hmm. You know if your silage is okay or maybe if you have problems. So Frank, to summarize, why the farmers should use inoculants to make better fermentation on mice slash? For the fermentation, you would not need an inoculant for mice silage. Maybe the inoculant makes the fermentation a little bit better, but just fermentation, mace is fermenting alone. 
What is much, much more important is aerobic stability. You need here heterofermentative bacteria to increase aerobic stability to prevent heating, energy, dry matter losses, to prevent mold growth and mycotoxins. How much it can be the losses of dry matter if we see the, the silo like that without uh, inoculants? It, in the worst case, it could be 100% of the silo of if, course, you, if yeah. it's very moldy, but it could be between 5% and in, in practical silos, 30%. Imagine when you have a bad surface and you have mm -hmm. to remove it, bad corners, some mold part, mm -hmm. you lose and you invest a lot of time to remove it, working time. Okay, so at least 5% we loss of dry matter, yeah? Um, that is absolute minimum, I think even more. Uh -huh. And if we will try to use inoculants, it could help. Yes, we, if I could understand. we saw roughly with an oculens 7 percent points, roughly more or less mm -hmm. reduction in dry matter losses. Okay. So let's say going from 15 to 8. Even with an oculent, you will have losses. Mm -hmm. There's no an oculent making magic mm -hmm. uh, and doing everything perfectly. It's a combination of good management mm -hmm. and an inoculant that will reduce losses. Okay, Frank, thank you so much for your help. Thank you. And I hope to see you again in Poland. With pleasure. Thank you. Bye.